In just a few minutes, small business owners can now sign up for Blackfoot Communication Services. Whether it's dependable voice options or internet services, sign up simply by visiting blackfootsmallbusiness.com. Click on the services you wish, select an installation time and date, and you're done. Small business services at the touch of your fingers. Connect to more with Blackfoot Communications and blackfootsmallbusiness.com. Excitement, uh, obviously, uh, within our team, and I hope within our community and across the state, to all our fans, you know, quite frankly, across the country, are excited for this week to to have a game in sight. Um, in, in in McNeese State, we have a a really good opponent um, that traditionally has, has had a really good football program. Uh, they're coming coming uh, off a coaching change, um, so there's uncertainty as far as what we what we're going to see on Saturday. These first games typically go one of two ways where you think you kind of know a team inside or out or a situation like this where you're doing a lot of guesswork based on you know, where coaches have come from, uh, the schemes that they've ran in the past. So for us, we have to, uh, we have to be fundamentally sound. Um, you know, we have several guys that will be playing for the first time and um, we got to keep things as simple as possible um, so we can play as fast as possible. And that's, that's the message right now. We, you know, we're four days. Uh, into McNeese prep right now with with four days, um, you know, in front of us yet. But I really feel good about our progress at this point, and you know, I think our guys are are certainly excited, and and you know, uh, I think as coaches, we're all excited to see what uh, what this team looks like for the, for the first time on a game day. So with that, open it up. Is there any extra excitement this year compared to last you know, opening at home with Gold Rush? Uh, you know, I don't I don't know. I think each year's its own year. Um, you know, to find out kind of what we're made of in front of our home fans this year, uh, as opposed to going on the road, I, I think there is excitement with it. Um, you know, I know for a lot of us that have been through a gold rush, whether as coaches or players, there, there's not that an, that same anticipation of what this is going to look like. Um, but uh, nonetheless, it's great to start at home um, in front of our home fans and um, you know feel that energy and, and obviously let that uh, that crowd lift us throughout the game. Um, and uh, any, anything from the last week of fall camp that stood out? How did you feel like those, those last few days went? Well, we shifted into McNeese prep um, and got after it pretty good. We were we were full pads on, on both Friday and Saturday, um, so it felt like we shifted into that well. Um, you know, that's when you, you're splitting and, and you have your dedicated scout teams, and um, you're really looking almost entirely at McNeese. So we did a few things uh, good on good, um, but for, by and large, it was. The scout team work, and I, I felt like, you know, both our scout team guys um, handled that well and gave good effort, and I thought our our guys were pretty locked in as far as um, shifting gears. You mentioned it earlier, but what kind of stands out about McNeese to you? Well, that's the hard part. You know, I, I think I think you got to look at a couple things. Um, you got to look at the history of their program for sure. Um, they've they've been a program that that I've never faced, but uh, very familiar with as far as um, Knowing that they've they've had a lot of success over the years, and you know, um, at the same time, you look at the coaching staff and the the success that um, that they had at Valdosta. And it's you know, it's a lot of Valdosta uh, that moved along with with him as as the staff. And you know, I, I think in this day and age, um, you know, with the, the transfer game being the way it is. Um, you can add a lot of pieces in a hurry and, and change the makeup of your team. So, I think we're we're going into it um, with some flexibility. I guess the way we view them, um, you know, I, it's not a team where you could look at just their tape from last year and say this is exactly what they're going to be. You can't just look at Veldas's film necessarily and say this is exactly what they're going to be. It's got to be a blend of of schemes from some different places and also the the talent that they do return. So. Um, I, I think we're just just preaching to our guys. Uh, we got to be concerned about us first and foremost, about playing our best, and we got to be a, able to make some adjustments both as players and coaches within the co course of the game. Because there's no way in the, the, a game one like this that you can present everything in practice. I mean, it's just not possible. So 
Um, you know, typically, and I've been coaching for, for quite a while now, and it seems like it's 50-50, you know, 50% you kind of know what you're going to get, and 50% of the time you have these openers where um, who knows, and we're kind of on the other side of that. Bouncing off of that, has it been harder to game prep just because you don't really have a blueprint of what this team is going to present with an entirely new coaching staff and then more than half the roster all being new to the program? I think it's more challenging than the other way. Um, and I, that's where I think, you know, experience just tells you, hey, let's, let's, let's maybe keep things more simple. Let's, let's be prepared to adjust. Let's certainly prepare our guys with some some thoughts, you know, um, whether that's taking them from, from Valdosta or wherever, I guess. But um, yeah, it's it's more challenging, um, you know. But then sometimes your guys maybe do play a little freer at the same time because when you do focus typically on your own side of things, I, I think that's that can be a freer feeling sometimes. I guess with what you do know, what are you kind of expecting on offense? I know there's been a little bit of a quarterback battle. Are you expecting more of a run game, pass game? Well, I, I, you know, they were explosive at, at Valdosta, and you know, they they were able to put points on the board and, and and throw the ball plenty, but also have a very effective running game. So I, I think I think there's a balance there. Obviously, the the quarterback battle playing out, and, and you know, each quarterback for every team is is a little bit different. So, you know, I think once once we get a feel for uh, their first quarterback, I think that can dictate some things. Um, you know, as series kind of uh, pile on one another. But yeah, I think it's pretty open-minded right now. But I, I know they were explosive at Valdosta, and I know that I, I'm certain that's what they aim to be um, in this move to McNeese. Any players in particular that stand out on film? Well, I think that's, that's it is harder to judge right now. Um, you know, I, I think I think we got to have an, a fair assumption that they're, they're going to be athletic. And, you know, um, new names as far as what you read and hear about are are coming to the forefront. You know, not, not necessarily names that were, were with McNeese before. So, I don't. If to single anybody out right now, I think would be would be a mistake. But uh, again, have that open mindedness to, to we're going to have to see how it unfolds those those first couple series in particular to then maybe dial in on some particular players. You know, way different. Then you see an opponent maybe mid mid season for sure. What went into the decision of putting Danny at Mike over Cal? Well, I think it was a it was a combination of, of Danny's effectiveness um, in spring ball um, and and Cal not having spring ball and you know realizing he had a real good season at Will last year and you know that combination with Nolan Asselson really being able to play both spots kind of in some ways gets us back to where we were at the beginning of, of last year with um, Danny and Cal both dedicated to each spot and Nolan playing playing both as, both as opposed to flipping um, Danny and, and Cal. I guess, you know, Danny's the one that probably is the true Mike where I think that the other two could probably play both spots. Um, so familiarity a little bit. Danny's uh, ascension, you know, spring and, and fall camp and, you know, uh, coupled with, with Nolan being back and Nolan providing that versatility. So I, I think a lot of ways we see it as kind of three starters for those two positions um, and having one guy be the, the, the flex guy as opposed to two of them is a better way to go about it. What about uh, Marcus going to the right tackle and Cole saying being, you know, right guard will into that decision? Well, I, I think we went into fall camp saying, it, you know, we have position flexibility. I've spoke to that before. We want to get um, our top five guys on the field, at least the way we see it right now. And I think it became apparent that, that Cole and, and Marcus were in that that five five man uh, designation. Um, and, and Cole's position flexibility is center and guard and, and Marcus is his guard and tackle. So, you know, putting that all together to have those guys at guard and tackle respectively is um, is how that came about. It doesn't mean that at any one point as we go down the season that Cole couldn't play center or Marcus couldn't play guard. But right now, this is where we, we see it fitting the best. In, 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 an, in game one, in particular for a guy like Marcus that hasn't um, seen any game action, I, I think it would be a mistake to think we can bounce him back and forth between positions. So it doesn't mean just those five guys are going to play, but that's how, um, at least if, if we were going to play the game today, we would start. And I, I trust that will look the same on Saturday. 
then Taco at Pump Return what kind of uh, made him kind of ascend to that point? Uh, real, real steady hand um, all through, uh, all through fall camp, and he's he's caught the ball well. He's made good decisions, and you know I think he's got the ability to to, to get into the open field. So, um, you know I feel really confident about a true freshman going back there and, and being our punt returner and and and, and continuing to build uh, throughout the season. And you know we have to. I think we went in the went in the fall saying. In the return game, um, you know, schematically can only do so much. Um, we have to get better at the return positions, and I think that's reflected in you know two new guys um, being at the top of those lists. And the other guy, Marquis, what, what kind of made him stand out? I well, I same, th you know, I, I think it's kick and punt return are different. It's a different skill set, um, but he was clearly, I think, the guy that we felt like. Um, give us the best chance to, to make a play you know uh, he can really roll once he once he gets going and you know kickoff return is a um, is a really a downhill um, you got to need a guy with speed and that's that's willing to hit it and he's showing that um, you know and the difference is, is I think punt return there's there's a lot more opportunities to to make decisions, to make plays in this day and age, you know, kickoff return those those opportunities are few and far between. So when we do get an opportunity to have someone um, as dynamic as Marquis is, is exciting. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. Um, you know, this Saturday, I, I think both uh, Willie backing up Taco and Lane backing up uh, uh, Marquis, I think, are both capable guys and, and, and showed flashes. Um, have shown flashes in the past, so. But I, you know, excited about what those those guys bring to the return game, and, and we hope for the results that we're lo we're looking for. I'm curious if you could speak to I know the captains were named recently. I'm curious if you could speak to those guys being selected. Yeah, you know, you go in, um, players vote, and, and I think for what I've been around to do it in fall camp, um, you know, when when everybody on the the team I think has kind of seen that. Uh, at least uh, the full, full, full camp. Most of our freshmen were here for a, a chunk of the summer. At Blackfoot Communications, our mission is to connect people, businesses, and communities, bringing a world-class fiber network to homes, communities, and businesses of all sizes, ensures Montanans have access to fast, reliable, and secure internet and phone services. Are you ready for fiber internet? To find out if fiber is coming to your area, visit goblackfoot.com slash ready for fiber. Connect to more with Blackfoot Communications. The captains, but that doesn't mean that Ty, Ty and Cal were both leaders and, and vocal leaders at times. So I think all four um, are very deserving, and I feel really good about that group of four. We have a group of 14 that's, that is that is our bigger leadership group, our CATS Council, that will continue to um, – you know, lead us in many ways as well. And these four guys are all part of that. And, you know, they'll be the guys that uh, I, I suppose take a, a greater responsibility. But, you know, as we lost a lot of, I think, really quality leaders last year, I think going back to January, I felt good about the leadership potential of this group. And to this point, they've, they've shown that. Yeah, I, I think the the biggest thing he knows is the returning players and you know what type of ability they have. Um, I think the scheme things, um, you know, you're you're matching that player ability to to new schemes. Um, so really, no real insight on schemes, you know, at all. But I, I, yeah, he definitely he knows. I think knows what cap what capabilities the players have, um, whether that's offense, defense, special teams, and. That's certainly not all their players at the same time, but but it's, it's certainly been a, an asset. And then just looking at the depth chart, I know uh, Lane Summit is number two at tailback. What kind of went into that decision? I know he's been somebody you've talked about, um, but him rather than Elijah number two. Well, I, I think it's a body of work. Again, I you know how that would have ultimately played out last fall. You know, we don't know. Lane went down that first game, so he, they were pretty pretty tight last fall. Um, and what Lane's been able to put together is a, is a healthy spring and a, and a healthy fall. And, um, you know, I think Lane's really a, a really steady guy that's continued to, to get better and better. And it's more, I think, about Lane 
Lane's progress than anything Elijah's done. Um, and I'd anticipate, I mean, we listed two there, but Elijah and Jared White are going to get some some play at, at tailback. So we, like we've talked about all along, this is more than likely a, you know, a four-headed attack, um, volume and all that. Um, you know, we'll have to see it. You know, I think uh, they all have to prove themselves, you know, and that starts with, with Kagan. And, and, you know, um, situationally, I think all four guys aren't, aren't limited. I think they can be on the field on, on all downs, but we're only going to put one of them out there at a time. So that's kind of how we started. And it, like, it, like I said, uh, Lane being the backup right now is, is a credit to him being healthy and the progress he's continued to make. They must have seen it somewhere. That's another world away. I, I think what we got to be. I think what we've talked about is is where they come from, their league. Um, they've been a good program, and, and you know while while they've been maybe a little off through the last few years, um, they have the capabilities. Football is important at McNeese State, and, and you know their ability to to get right back up near the top isn't super complicated in, in this day and age. So I think what we've talked mostly about is don't get caught up into maybe what they've been record-wise um, in recent years. Let's, let's think about what they're capable of. And, and you know, um, you look at a coaching staff that comes off of the success that they had at Valdosta, um, and there's new energy there, new ideas. Um, you know, you, you don't completely wipe the slate clean um, with a with a coaching change, but you, it's just it's it's new energy, new life that um, I know we're going to have to contend with, and that's what we've talked about more than our one game against them, I guess. Are there any uh, absences for this game that you didn't mention last week? Uh, no, I, we we talked about um, well, let's see where we're at, I guess. The, the changes that, that have occurred most recently would be um, Devin Davis and Jahari Martin. Um, um, Devin had uh, season-ending surgery. I'm trying to think if we talked about that or not. We probably didn't because um, we talked last Monday. And then Jahari, um, Jahari will be back, but Jahari will be out right now. Um, he went. Uh, he went down. They both went down um, that previous Saturday. So as of Monday, we were still kind of waiting on, on information. So. You know, he was having uh, he's, he's he's having some so shoulder issues, and and it was continued to, it continually got aggravated. Um, so so similar to, you know, Ty Okada, Callahan O'Reilly, some of the things that they dealt with. Um, this was a lo much longer haul for him, and um, you know he's a he's a young guy that was really making progress, but he's a young guy that has a bunch of time left at at the same time here. So it was better to get um, to get him fixed up, and um, he would still have potentially four years to to compete. And, and you have a lot of depth at that position, so I guess is there silver lining? Don't you have James? And, and yeah, I, I think I think to. Yeah, I, you know, Devin was going to figure in um, amongst the five guys, and now we have now we have four, and you know, um, it's one less guy, and, and you know that there's a trickle down with um, with defensive play, but then also special teams, and um, it's it's I feel bad for him, but you know at the same time um, he's got a he's got a, the right outlook on it. Um, and like like I said, I mean he's got a bright future, and he's come so far in the last you know eight months um, that you know we feel real good about um, where he'll be on the other side of this. Coulter, do you have anything? Yeah, hello, Coach. Uh, I just have uh, four for you here. Um, so first of all, you mentioned sort of the position, the offensive versatility on the offensive line. Um, I want to know just about what it's like for them to get a, their first real test, because I know they've been getting tested by your very talented defensive front, but what's the biggest difference uh, when you get into a real game and, you know, when, when teams are doing stuff maybe you didn't expect? How do you hope that those guys respond? How do you hope that uh, they're tested on Saturday? Well, I think uh, you, you kind of alluded to it in there. I mean, it's they're going to get tested. They're going to be um, 
presented with some some things that we haven't exactly prepared for, so they can't panic. You know, I, I think that's the biggest thing. You're an experienced guy, um, rarely lets panic enter his mind. I think uh, a new guy can, and we really got to fight against that. You know, I, I think they got to know that they're not going to be perfect. Um, we want them to play fast, and sometimes you play fast. Um, one play doesn't work, and then you got to move on to the next one. And that's that's probably the biggest thing with that whole crew now playing together for the first time. Um, you know, Justice has played the games he's played, but that's that's one year. Rush played what he played. Um, Cole's played some. Um, JT played a season of JC ball last year. Uh, Marcus hasn't played. So, you know, they're all coming at it from a little bit different angle, but, um, you know, we're going to throw Jacob Kettles out there at times, Titan Fleischman. Um, you know, I think all those guys just have to realize, hey, this, you know, let it, let it slow down, take a deep breath, one play to the next, um, stay within the context of what you've been taught, don't try to do too much. So um, easier said than done, though. And, and I, I think our preparation through um, fall camp and now is this 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 next couple of days, hopefully puts them in a piece of at a, you know where they have a peace of mind that you know they can go out there and play confidently and, and play as fast as possible. You mentioned the new coaching staff there at McNeese State, but I want to ask you just about the junior college angle. It seems to me that a lot of times at a JC, when you're coaching, you sort of have to take what is at your disposal, right? So it seems like there's a lot of flexibility that goes into that, but maybe a lot of diversity as well schematically and also just kind of changing and morphing your identity each year. So, I mean, what do you think of just the thought of actually coaching at a junior college? I know you have not done that, but, I mean, it seems as if maybe there's guys with a lot of flexibility that, that do come from that level. Yeah, no question. I, I think, um, you know, you, you're going to have guys maybe three falls at the most if they, they happen to redshirt. Um, sometimes you're going to have them for a fall. Typically you hope to have them for two. I mean, so your turnover, um, you know, the numbers you're dealing with, um, development is, is seen probably in a different light. Uh, obviously you're trying to develop them for the next, next step. So I, I do think there's a lot of aspects to coaching at that level from that, that long-term mindset that are way different. But it's, you're still coaching football. You're still coaching the schemes you believe in and, and trying to get guys to perform to their best. So I think that part is the same. But your, you know, your, your short-term versus your long-term view is, is quite a bit different. And you mentioned just how football does matter at McNeese State. I mean, you look at it and you look at the history of the program, I mean, they won 14 conference championships. They played for the one AA title a couple times. I know that's 20 plus years in the past, but this, it's a proud school, proud football tradition. So, I mean, can that influence now, the here and now, uh, as you prepare for an opponent? Well, I, that just, that, yeah, what I would, what I'd say to that, tradition doesn't just go away. And um, if you've had it over time at your, your institution, um, to light that fire, it, it doesn't necessarily – take years I mean it, it just takes you know gaining a little momentum um, and obviously they made the hire they did because of the success that he had had at Valdosta and you know there's an expectation that this staff has to to win like they've been winning and and, and you know you, you couple those two things together with a, a, a institution in a community that rallies around their team you have a coaching staff that ex expects to win um, you can catch fire pretty quickly. So that's that's where, you know, we're talking to our guys again about, you know, we got to live in the moment of where this team is right now. Don't look at maybe where they've been the last couple couple years or whatever record-wise. Um, you know, expect their best. Expect them to be energized. Um, expect them to, you know, be playing a, a different brand of football than maybe what we're looking at Um from a film perspective from, from the, this most recent season. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I see them as a, a program that can, can catch fire. And, and Coach Wilson what, didn't get fired. He, he left to go back to LSU. So this isn't a situation where um, they, were, they, were, they were building under Coach Wilson. It wasn't like um, they weren't going anywhere. And I know Coach Garza, Willie Mack, was, was, was part of that. So, 
you know, there's there's some factors that, that tell me um, from from experience has you know expect a, a different looking outfit, but this this thing was going in in the right direction um, from our vantage point. And just two more things for me. One, have you, do you have any experience with Big East State? But if not, the Southland Conference seems like it has a sort of a uh, consistent identity as a league. So I know you do have some crossover with Southland teams, particularly Sam Houston when you played them back in the national championship games at North Dakota State and also last year as well. So what do you just think of that league in general? Yeah, I, I've personally never faced them, but uh, between Sam Houston, Stephen F. Austin, Northwestern State, Nichols State, uh, I think those would be the four that – that I do have some experience with, and um, you know, always uh, very athletic, uh, athletic teams that, that play football. You know, the the bulk of their team, um, those teams, you know, they're coming from places where where football really matters. You know, uh, Louisiana, Texas, um, and, and just the South in general. You know, so you're getting high school kids that. Um, that have a good foundation in a lot of cases, and, and you know, athleticism has certainly been a, um, at a premium on the teams that that we faced in the past. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of that that I, I would tag, you know, McNeese right there, and, and that's where you know, you're not maybe playing McNeese in the past, but uh, you're you're seeing them on film, you know, against any one of those those four opponents. Um, so I've always had a you know, a great deal of respect for that league and, and for a program like McNeese, uh, even though I've never uh, went head to head against them. And last thing, I just want to ask you about your quarterback one more time. I know Tommy has put in a ton of work, uh, but how do you hope he sort of channels that work? Because it is sort of this nine months of preparation and improvement since the last time he took the field with an injury in between. So uh, what confidence level do you have in him as he retakes the field? And, and uh, what sort of work have you seen behind the scenes that gives you that confidence? Well, we have a lot of confidence in him. Um, physically, he's continued to develop. You know, I think his his running um, ability, you know, is every bit now what it was bef before the injury. He's worked really hard to get get back, and that's you know that's something I know he can um, he can go to when he needs to. I suppose we can go to it as well. Um, as a passer, he's continued to develop. Um, and I think the the biggest thing going back, say to like December, January to now, you know, I think his understanding of of what we're trying to do, while it's still a work in progress, is so so much further along. Um, you know, Tommy's really smart, and you know, intelligence um, in some cases can hold you back because you know too much. Your experience, you know, you want your experience to kind of catch up with your intelligence. So, I think. You know, I'll, you know, while he is a as a brilliant thinker um, as a quarterback, there's that um, there's that mode where you just got to play too. So I think that's that's probably striking that balance is really the the thing that we're we're looking for. Not trying to do a million things with them, trying to keep it again as simple as for him as we can, so that he can play as fast as possible. And that's both in the the run game, the pass game. But then also being able to to make decisions at the line of scrimmage that puts our offense in the best play. So we've taken everything a little further, um, but he needs that exp those you know he needs all these experiences to kind of catch up with how dang smart he is. And that's um, you know I think that'll be a continued work in progress um, you know especially through the first half of the season. But you know really happy with with where he's at, leadership, competitiveness, um, you know. Uh, we couldn't ask for much more in a young man. You good, Colter? Yep. One, just one more for me. Yeah. In just a few minutes, small business owners can now sign up for Blackfoot Communication Services. Whether it's dependable voice options or internet services, sign up simply by visiting blackfootsmallbusiness.com. Click on the services you wish, select an installation time and date, and you are done. Small business services at the touch of your fingers. Connect to more with Blackfoot Communications and BlackfootSmallBusiness.com.